Welcome to Enchanted Journeys, your guide to the world's most magical destinations. We delve into the heart of each location, unearthing the stories, the traditions and the quirks that make each place truly unique. Today we're embarking on a whimsical odyssey to Portugal, a land kissed by the sun where the ancient and the modern dance a captivating tango, and where the food and wine are as vibrant as the landscape itself. So buckle up, fellow travellers, and prepare for a journey filled with culture, history, and a dash of British wit. Let's set sail for Portugal. Imagine embarking on a whimsical odyssey to the sun-kissed shores of Portugal, where the golden light dances on pastel buildings and melancholic fado music fills the air. This is a land where tradition and modernity tango in a captivating dance, where trams rattle up the steep hills of Lisbon and the scent of Bacalhau, a local twist on the classic fish and chips wafts from bustling seaside cafes. We're off to Porto next, to sip the city's namesake port wine in the storied cellars of Villanova de Gaia, jesting about the centuries of British porting. Then it's a breezy ride through the UNESCO-listed Douro Valley aboard a Rabelo boat, the wind in our hair and dramatic terraced vineyards unfolding before us. Down south, the Algarve's beaches serve as a backdrop for cheeky banter about sandcastles rivaling Sintra's fortresses, so buckle up and prepare for an enchanting journey filled with culture, history and a dash of British wit. Our journey begins in the vibrant city of Lisbon, a place where trams rattle up steep hills and the scent of Bacalhau fills the air. Imagine cobblestone streets winding their way through a colourful mosaic of pastel buildings. Each corner turned, a new vista unfolds, revealing a captivating tableau of old and new. Lisbon, Portugal's coastal capital, is a city where history breathes through every alleyway, whispering tales of past glory and maritime adventures. It's a city that wears its scars with pride, each layer of paint a testament to its resilience, each crack in the facade a badge of honour earned through the passage of time. But Lisbon is not just a city trapped in the amber of its past. It's a place where tradition and modernity have a unique love affair. Here, ancient customs share the stage with the city's burgeoning contemporary art scene, Take bacalhau, for instance. This traditional dish, made from dried and salted cod, is a staple in Portuguese cuisine. It's a nod to Portugal's seafaring heritage, a taste of the ocean in every bite. But it's not just about the fish. It's about the blend of flavors, the art of preparation, and the love that goes into every dish. And today, modern Lisbon chefs are giving this time-honored dish a twist, turning an age-old recipe into a modern culinary delight. Lisbon's architecture too is a blend of old and new. From the grandeur of Geronimo's monastery to the modern lines of the Matt Museum, the city's buildings tell a story of a place that values its past while embracing the future. And let's not forget the city's iconic trams rattling their way up and down steep hills, a testament to Lisbon's resilience and adaptability. These trams, some dating back to the early 20th century, are more than just a charming mode of transport. They are a symbol of a city that refuses to forget its roots, even as it hurtles into the future. As we bid farewell to Lisbon, we carry with us memories of its charming streets and tantalizing flavors. But more importantly, we carry the spirit of a city where tradition and modernity meet, creating a unique symphony that lingers long after the last tram has rattled past. Next, we find ourselves in Porto, sipping the city's namesake port wine in Villanova de Gaia's storied cellars. Ah, the rich sweet nectar of the Douro Valley. This isn't just any wine. This is port, born in the vineyards of Portugal and matured in the cellars of Gaia. A wine so good, it's been the toast of the British for over 300 years. Now, why would the Brits, known for their tea, adopt a Portuguese wine as their own? Well, it was all thanks to a little spat with the French in the 17th century. British merchants, unable to import French wines due to the ongoing feud, turned to Portugal. And boy, did they hit the jackpot. They discovered this delicious fortified wine and it's been porting across the seas ever since. But the story of port is more than just a tale of trade. It's a journey through the breathtaking UNESCO-listed Douro Valley. Imagine sailing on a Rabello boat, the traditional vessel used to transport barrels of wine down the river. You glide along the winding Douro, terraced vineyards cascading down the hillsides their vibrant green hues contrasting with the stark rocky slopes. 
The air is filled with the earthy scent of grapevines, a promise of the rich, full-bodied wine they will produce. You dock at a quaint quinta, a wine estate, where you're greeted with a glass of port. As you swirl the ruby liquid in your glass, you marvel at the journey it has made, from the sun-drenched vineyards of the Douro Valley to the cool, dark cellars of Gaia, and finally to your hand. Each sip is not just a taste of wine, but a taste of history, a legacy that has been preserved and perfected over centuries. Let's raise a glass to this enchanting journey, to the hard-working vintners who continue to charm the world with their exquisite port, and to the beautiful Douro Valley that has nurtured this wine with its fertile soils and favorable climate. With a final sip of port, we leave Porto, our hearts warmed by its rich history and fine wines. Down in the Algarve, the beaches are not just for sunbathing. They're for cheeky banter about sandcastles rivaling the fortresses of Sintra. Here we are, in the Algarve, where the sun generously bestows its golden kiss upon the coastline. Sprawling sands stretch out like a sunbather's paradise, with the azure waves of the Atlantic providing a rhythmic soundtrack. But wait, what's this? Is that a sandcastle or the Penna Palace in miniature form? The Algarve's beaches are a canvas for creativity, where sandcastle architects sculpt masterpieces that would give Sintra's fortresses a run for their money. The sandcastles here aren't your run-of-the-mill bucket and spade affairs. Oh no, these are sand-sculpted marvels, complete with turrets, moats and drawbridges, reminiscent of the Quinta da Regalera. But don't be fooled. These sandy fortresses aren't guarded by knights, but by giggling children armed with plastic spades. And the battles fought here? They're not for kingdoms, but for the last ice cream cone. It's a delightful scene that would bring a smile to even the most stoic of faces. And while we're on the topic of fortresses, let's not forget the real ones that dot the Algarve's coastline. They may not be made of sand, but their history is just as intriguing. Picture this, sun-baked stone walls, whispering tales of seafaring explorers and maritime glory. There's a certain charm in the juxtaposition of these timeless fortresses against the fleeting sandcastles, each telling their own tales of Portugal's past and present. As we stroll along the shoreline, our footprints marking the sands, we can't help but be captivated by the Algarve's enchanting blend of history, beauty and whimsy. It's a place where the old coexists with the new, where laughter mingles with the sea breeze and where every grain of sand seems to hold a story. As we leave the Algarve, we take with us the lingering scent of the sea and the echoes of our laughter. Stepping into Sintra feels like stepping into a fairy tale with its whimsical palaces and lush landscapes. Now imagine a realm where dreamy palaces are nestled amidst verdant hills and the air is filled with the sweet scent of blooming camellias. That, my dear friends, is the enchanting beauty of Sintra. Sintra, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is a vibrant palette of colors a symphony of architectural styles and a treasure trove of historical intrigue. It's as if the pages of a storybook have come alive with every corner whispering tales of yesteryears. As we wander through the winding lanes, we come across the Pena Palace, perched high on a hill like a lighthouse, guiding us through a sea of green. Its flamboyant mishmash of architectural styles is a sight to behold. If walls could talk, they'd probably tell us tales of royals frolicking in the summer sun, while we, the common folk merely dream of such opulence. Not far from Peña, we find the Moorish castle, a stark contrast with its austere stone walls and watchtowers, silently standing guard over the town below. It's a reminder of a time when knights and nobles ruled the roost. You can almost hear the clatter of swords and the whispers of intrigue echoing through the ruins. And then there's the Quinta da Regalera, a gothic masterpiece with its grand mansion, mystical gardens and the captivating initiation well. It's a place where one can easily get lost, not just in the labyrinthine gardens, but in the bewitching tales of secret societies and mystical symbols. As we meander through these architectural wonders, it's hard not to be swept up in the fairy tale charm of Sintra. It's a place where the mundane meets the magical, where reality intertwines with fantasy. It's a place that reminds us that every stone, every tree, every palace has a story to tell. If only we have the patience to listen. So, as we bid adieu to this fairy tale retreat, we do so with a sense of wonder and a twinkle in our eyes. As we leave Sintra, 
we carry with us the magic of its fairy tale charm. In Portugal, festivities are a vibrant tapestry of music, dance, and joyous celebration. Now let's paint a picture of the Portuguese festivals. They are not just gatherings, they are grand spectacles that weave together centuries-old traditions with a pulsating energy that is utterly infectious. Imagine yourself in the midst of these festivities, the crowd thrumming with anticipation, the air thick with the scent of sizzling churico and the sweet aroma of pastéis de nata. Traditional folk music, fado, fills the air, its melancholic tunes resonating with the soulful history of this enchanting land. Now picture yourself joining the revelry, swept up in a sea of locals, each one more welcoming than the last. You find yourself in a dance, a slightly awkward but utterly enthusiastic jig. You're not quite sure of the steps, but the rhythm is infectious and the smiles around you are encouraging. You're not just observing the culture, you're living it, breathing it, becoming a part of it. These festivals are a riot of colors, the streets adorned with vibrant streamers and the iconic Azulejo tiles reflecting the joyous atmosphere. Each town has its own unique celebration, from the medieval fairs of Santa Maria da Feira to the tomato-throwing festivities in Bucaco. These celebrations are a testament to the Portuguese spirit, vivacious, welcoming and undeniably contagious. They are a reflection of the jubilant spirit that radiates from every Azulejo tiled surface. A spirit that is as much a part of Portugal as the sun-kissed beaches and the terraced vineyards. These festivals are not just parties, they're an embodiment of Portugal's vibrant culture. A culture that cherishes its history, celebrates its present and welcomes its future with open arms. And as you partake in these celebrations, you don't just witness Portugal's culture, you become a part of it. As we bid farewell to Portugal, we carry with us the jubilant spirit that radiates from every Azulejo tiled surface. So my friends, let's raise a glass of Ginjinha to Portugal, to its vibrant culture, and to the unforgettable memories we've made along the way. And so, our whimsical odyssey comes to a close, leaving us richer in experiences and memories. We've meandered through the labyrinthine lanes of Lisbon, where the clatter of trams and melancholic strains of Fado became our symphony. We've savoured the unique flavour of bacalao, our own fish and chip saga, only with a Portuguese twist. We've sipped the sweet nectar of Porto's namesake port wine in the storied cellars of Vila Nova de Gaia, jesting about porting it back to Blighty for centuries. We've allowed the wind to tease our hair aboard a Rabelo boat, traversing the UNESCO-listed Douro Valley as the dramatic terraced vineyards unfolded before us like a verdant tapestry. We've bantered on the sun-kissed beaches of the Algarve, where building sandcastles became a cheeky competition with the fairy tale fortresses of Sintra. And oh, Sintra, a jaunty jaunt through its palaces was nothing short of stepping into a storybook, with sly asides whispered about royal holiday retreats. We've danced our slightly awkward, yet utterly enthusiastic jig at local festivals, immersing ourselves in the jubilant spirit of Portugal. We've seen the vibrant culture radiate from every Azulejo tiled surface, painting a picture of a country that celebrates life with an infectious energy. But the journey doesn't end here, oh no. This is but a taste of what Portugal has to offer, a mere sip of the vintage port that is this vibrant country. There are still countless lanes to explore, foods to savour, wines to sip, beaches to frolic on, palaces to marvel at, festivals to dance in, and Azulejo tiles to admire. So tip your hat, raise your glass of Ginjinha, and join us next time on Enchanted Journeys for more travel tales served with a side of British humour. Until then, stay enchanted. Dear fellow explorers, as we wrap up our enchanted journey through Portugal, we hope you've enjoyed the ride. From the labyrinthine lanes of Lisbon to the sun-kissed beaches of the Algarve, every moment has been a delightful discovery. We hope these experiences have sparked your wanderlust and given you a taste of Portugal's enchanting charm. Now we'd love to hear from you. Have you been to Portugal? Or is it on your travel bucket list? Do you have any travel tales of your own to share or perhaps a favorite Portuguese delicacy you've tried? Pour out your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. We can't wait to read your stories and suggestions. If you've enjoyed this journey and can't wait for the next, don't forget to subscribe to Enchanted Journeys and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on our next whimsical odyssey. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Portugal. 
It's been a pleasure sharing these experiences with you. Until our paths cross again in the next enchanted journey, stay enchanted and keep exploring. Thank you.